Good evening, Tessa. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. How are you? Good evening. Good Fine, evening. thank you, Angel. I'm very, very good and very excited for this module. I am tired. Uh, I, I guess. I guess that is. <laughs> yes, I imagine that. Good evening. Uh -huh. Good evening. I know that. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Mm. I know that all of you are very, very tired because. Emerson. Glendita. Aleli. Un placer verlos por acá. Los que conozco, los demás, también es un gusto conocerlos. Es un placer verlos y... Ahí, ahí está la Santi. Hola. Hola. Santi, ¿qué onda, Santi? ¿Cómo están? ¿Cómo están? Un gusto. Tranquilo. Eh, qué bueno. Emerson. Qué bueno Ale. verlos. Échale Bye. ganas. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Excuse me, teacher. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Teníamos días de no vernos con Amand. Ahí en, en, la larga, en la larga espera hemos estado ahí. <laughs> Pero bueno, ya estamos acá. That's the best thing. So, we're going to start. And we are going to, um, in this case, it's not like we are going to have a, a presentation and a lot of things, because we are going to do it like, um, like it's slowly. So uh, I'm going to introduce myself because we are going to begin with this module and the topics that we are going to develop uh, during the week. So, my name is Elena Chavarria, and I am in charge of this module, and we are going to be working um, this whole month. So I hope that you can learn a lot of things, and also I um, uh, want to learn a lot of things from you. So it is a pleasure to be here in this um, module and in this course with you. So it's very, very exciting to be here. So, um, for the first thing, I just want to say something. Uh, I don't know if you have troubles with um, listening the things that I am saying, but right now here in the place that I live is raining, so I think it's going to be kind of hard sometimes. Um, another thing, I like to like work online uh, what this is mean the thing is that i like to work in a google document i'm not like to work like in a word or a powerpoint or something like that because i don't like that you are downloading documents every week so i have a, a google a document in which you are going to access um like i will send to you the link of my document and you are going to see all the information the exercises the examples and all of the things is there so you are going to have just one link and you can see all the information that we are going to develop during the week so that is like the main thing about the the way i like to work Another important thing is that if you have a like troubles or you have like that or you need help with your work in the platform or you have something to say about the, the sessions, you can uh, tell me and we can solve the problems here in the session. And also, if you have troubles understanding something, you can say, Excuse me, I have some problems understanding. Can you explain? And I will explain the things to you because we are learning. But for the first session, I have an important video for you. I have information 
uh, that we are going to see and we are going to listen about uh, the courses that in support is uh, having for you. So we are going to see the video first and then we are going to begin with the topic that we are going to develop right now. But give me one second because it's like charging. And here we are. So let me share the screen and if you have trouble listening or seeing the video, you can tell me. Si tienen problemas para escuchar o ver el video, me avisan por favor. So let's begin. El INSAFORP ha trabajado con un alto nivel de profesionalismo, pensando siempre en incrementar las posibilidades de crecimiento para la gente de nuestro país. Nos hemos dedicado a que a través de la formación se generen oportunidades para los salvadoreños y así cada vez más, en un mundo más competitivo y globalizado, siempre existan en nuestro país posibilidades de superación para todos. Miles de hombres y mujeres han logrado desarrollarse profesionalmente y han ampliado sus conocimientos y posibilidades laborales a través de los diferentes programas de formación que son parte del sistema de formación profesional, el cual ofrece programas de formación para todos los niveles de recurso humano dentro de una empresa. Se ha incrementado productividad de muchas industrias y cientos de empresas a través de la capacitación y formación de cientos de miles de salvadoreños con programas como... Área Técnica, ofreciendo cursos técnicos para mejorar el desempeño operativo y tecnológico de los trabajadores. Competencias Gerenciales, con temas de capacitación para complementar y actualizar conocimientos para áreas de gerencia. Inglés para el trabajo, contenidos estandarizados del inglés para hacer a los trabajadores más eficientes y productivos en el desempeño de sus funciones. Mejora de competitividad de las MIPES. Amplios temas de capacitación, específicos para micro y pequeños empresarios. Cursos cerrados y abiertos, tratando temas de capacitación para trabajadores de las empresas cotizantes de Insaforp. Insaforp Online, cursos online con el horario y ubicación que más convenga al usuario para la constante capacitación en múltiples temas y profesiones. Trabajando con el compromiso claro de ayudar al desarrollo del país y con un equipo profesional entregado a buscar oportunidades para nuestra gente, es que Insaport ha logrado tener un modelo de gobernanza y gestión ejemplar que tiene como base el diálogo permanente entre el sector empleador, laboral y el gobierno, formando a los trabajadores, capacitando a la gente de nuestro país. Es que transformamos la vida de las familias salvadoreñas, porque en Insaport trabajamos todos los días sabiendo que, a través del conocimiento, es que estamos formando un mejor El Salvador. Con el objetivo de formar en igualdad el Instituto Salvadoreño de Formación Profesional INSAFOR, presentó en el año 2017 la Guía para la Prevención y Erradicación de la Discriminación contra las Mujeres en los Centros de Formación Fijos, donde se desarrollan programas permanentes de formación profesional del INSAFOR, cuya elaboración contó con el apoyo de la Organización Internacional del Trabajo, OIT, y su objetivo a largo plazo es contribuir a mejorar las condiciones y oportunidades de acceso y permanencia de las mujeres en los procesos de formación profesional sin discriminación de ningún tipo. La guía pretende poner a disposición de INSAFOR y de sus centros colaboradores un instrumento que les permita identificar conocer, prevenir, atender y erradicar progresivamente cualquier discriminación por razones de género contra la mujer. Posteriormente, el INSAFOR desarrolló un plan piloto de implementación de la guía en tres centros de formación fijos y es así como surgen cuatro instrumentos fundamentales para la aplicabilidad de la guía, siendo estos manual de convivencia, protocolo de atención en casos de bullying y acoso sexual, lineamientos para la comunicación de los programas de formación con lenguaje inclusivo no sexista y la guía metodológica para la prevención y erradicación de la discriminación contra las mujeres. Dichos documentos fueron elaborados con el enfoque de derechos humanos y de género, estableciendo medidas que garanticen relaciones de respeto, igualdad y equidad entre todas las personas que forman parte y conviven en los centros de formación profesional. 
De esta forma el INSAFOR asume la igualdad de género como un principio transversal de trabajo, entregando a los centros de formación estas cuatro herramientas que complementan la guía para la prevención y erradicación de la discriminación contra las mujeres, a fin de que sean puestas en práctica en beneficio de las usuarias de la formación profesional. INSAFOR, formando en igualdad. Tell me, you have your hand like raised. You want to yes, um, yes, teacher. Este, I am Alali Concepcion. Uh, your mm -hmm. audio is not a here well. Um, I only understood the last part because uh, he said it in Spanish. Oh, it is not like you can hear clearly the audio. Yes. I don't understand nothing. Uh, the um, instruction, the first instruction, I don't understand. Okay, and uh, you mean me... in, in, in the class? Uh, no. Yo creo que nadie de la clase le entendió porque su audio no estaba muy bien. No sé qué pasa o pienso, pues algo, algo ha de haber pasado porque solo se le entendió la última parte que dijo, que lo del video, nada más, sí. y lo demás se le había cortado. Ok, eh, si vuelve a suceder alguna cuestión de ese tipo, que no escuchen o no se entienda mucho lo del audio, me comunican para tratar de arreglarlo. Lo que pasa es que estaba lloviendo y por eso les dije, está lloviendo y eh, va a ser un poco complicado. But now, you can hear me clearly or you have troubles understanding what I'm saying? Yes, yes, I understand. Ok. Okay, if we have troubles with the audio, now you can tell me and uh, something like that, because uh, it's a problem of the connection and you know that it's something that we need to work in, with. So, we're going to start. Um, as Aleli was saying, uh, maybe you cannot understand a thing that we, I was uh, saying at the beginning, but Um, I just was explaining that I don't like to work with documents that you need to download or with PowerPoint uh, documents or presentations. So I like to work with Google Docs that is online. Um, I will send to you the link of the document uh, that I'm going to use during the session so in that case we are going to have information for this month so in that case you can access to that information online so you don't need to have anything on your cell phone or your devices because you are just going to have the link and let me show you what is uh, this document that i am talking about that is this one So, you are going to find a document like this. Ustedes van a encontrar un documento como este cuando les envíe el enlace de este documento, del acceso a este documento a Google Docs, que es un documento en línea. And you are going to find all the information here. So, si ustedes dicen, ah, yo me perdí la clase porque no pude estar eh, o no entré a la sesión a tiempo, no sé de qué estaban hablando, ustedes van a tener el enlace y ahí van a ir viendo. Cuando yo escriba algo, a ustedes automáticamente se les actualiza y les aparece ahí. No es como que yo haga un documento en Google, en, en Word, y tengo que mandarle semana a semana lo que ustedes están viendo en el módulo o en, en las sesiones. So in this case, you can access to the link and you are going to have all the information here. And the first thing is that I like to have this kind of a sentence or phrases uh, at the beginning of the week. These kind of phrases you are going to say it just one time per week. So on Mondays, you are going to find these kind of phrases. Um, and the phrase for this week, for the beginning of the module is do not give up. The beginning is always the hardest. 
you need to keep in mind that maybe we are tired, that maybe we have a lot of things to do, but you know that you are doing everything for your future. So you need to keep going, you need to keep working, you need to keep fighting, and you are going to have all the things that you want. So that is the phrase, and now we are going to see what is the topic. And I'm going to do it like bigger because it's not like this. We're going to talk about adverbs before adjectives. So, vamos a hablar de una estructura. Uh, it's kind of long, but we're going to try to do it like kind of easy to understand. In this case, we're going to talk about the adverbs before adjectives and what are the uses. ¿Cuáles son los usos de los adverbios antes de los adjetivos? ¿O cuál es el significado que se les puede dar a estos adverbs before adjectives? So, but the first thing is, for these sessions, you know that you need to keep your uh, camera on almost all the time of, or maybe just like a couple of minutes because you know that we need to see each other. Also, you need to have your microphone uh, off because of the the sound uh, it's kind of distracting and if you have some questions you need to say something you something like that you need to raise your hand in 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 that um sense and or you can ask your question on the chat and we are going to try to um develop or help you with your question and also you need to, to work on the platform i know that you have the access already so you need to work on the platform because you know that uh, now we are at the beginning of the course but maybe we just think about oh it, it will be like very long and now we are at the end of the session but we need to work right now because it's very when you have time of course so, tell me, Aleli. Excuse me, teacher. I work in the uh, first uh, weekend, uh, week, but um, I'm going to uh, section one and two. Okay. Uh, I work, uh, work in um, section one and two and first week. Oh, que si vamos a trabajar esa semana la primera y segunda sección y en la, en la segunda semana la tercera como se ha venido trabajando anteriormente of course you can work like that or if you like to work in all of the sections you can do it it is not like you are just going to have one and two you can work okay. in all of the activities that you want and if you have time to do it then do it if you don't have to do it right now you can do it at the end of the week, but you can follow your um, the way that you are working on the platform. That's okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, first, we are going to listen a conversation uh, on the platform, and the people that um, work in the platform work it in the platform. Um, maybe listen to this uh, conversation because it is on the platform. But we are going to listen to this conversation because it is important for the topic because we are going to explain something about uh, the, uh, uh, the adverb before adjective listening that conversation. So give me a second and I'm going to access to the platform because I need to play the um audio there so give me a moment and we're going to listen to the conversation so in that case uh, we're going to see this conversation we're going to listen and we're going to find the um the clues or the uh, key ideas or the main ideas of the topic. And then we are going to explain what is this topic about. Así que vamos a escuchar primero la conversación para saber 
más o menos qué es lo que vamos a ver nosotros en, eh, en este tema. Y luego vamos a tener una explicación de cómo lo utilizamos, para qué nos sirve, en all of that thing. So, let's hear this conversation. Because I have it here, I need to... Okay. I have the video here and I'm going to share the screen. Here we are. Hi, welcome to this new section. We are about to watch and listen to a conversation about a city where adverbs before adjectives are used. As soon as you listen to it, I want you to play it again and practice the conversation with a friend or a relative. So where are you from, Carmen? I'm from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Wow, I've heard that's a really nice city. Yeah, it is. The weather is great, and there are some fantastic beaches just outside the city. Is it expensive there? No, it's not very expensive. Prices are pretty reasonable. How big is the city? It's a fairly big city, but it's not too big. It sounds perfect to me. Maybe I should plan a trip there sometime. Me. Maybe I okay, that is the conversation. We have Eric and Carmen that are talking about a city. The main thing is that in the name of the conversation, we have this structure of the adverbs before adjectives. It's a fairly big city. Es como decir un tanto grande, no muy grande, o sea, porque en este caso sería big city. Es como decir, es medianamente grande. Fairly big city. So, we have the conversation and it says, So, where are you from, Carmen? I'm from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Well, I have here that is really nice city. Really nice city. We have another one there. Yeah, it is. The weather is great and there are some fantastic beaches just outside the city. It is expensive there. No, it is not very expensive. Very expensive. Very expensive is another sentence in which we are using the adverbs before adjective. Price are very reasonable. In that case, again, we are using the structure. How big is the city? It's fairly big city. That is the name of the conversation. But it is not too big. Ahí está. Not too big. Es un poco grande, eh, medianamente grande, pero no muy grande. It's like medium. It sounds perfect to me. Maybe I should plan a trip there sometime. So, Just seeing and listening to that conversation, we can uh, see that um, the adjective is helping us to uh, like emphasize something about uh, the things that we are saying or the words that we are using. But we are going to make a review. In that case, uh, to um, understand more about the these um, words. The first thing is that we are going to see what are adjectives and then what are the adverbs. So the first thing is, so we are going to write here, review, because maybe you have a lot of information about this topic. So it is not like we are going to know this information for the first time. So the first thing is adjectives. I have a question. What is an adjective? For you, what is an adjective? A uh, bill. Mm -hmm. but, but what is the function of the adjective? Mm. Maybe qualities? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Describing. Describing qualities. Something else. Mm -hmm. 
How far I see? Excuse me? Comparative. Uh, comparative. Hmm, yes. So, let's see the other question. Can you give me some examples of adjectives where that function as adjectives? Adjective the time, place. Mm -hmm. For example, when you see a person that is like very, very, and we can say, Oh, she is very. In Spanish, we can say bonita, bonito. In English, is pretty, 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 pretty beautiful, beautiful, ah, pretty, beautiful, handsome, handsome. good. Handsome. Those are adjectives. Those words are adjectives, but. Don't worry, we are going to see what are the adjectives and we are going to remember some words that we can use as an adjective. So, the thing is, we use the adjective to, and you say, to describe nouns and pronouns. Utilizamos los adjetivos para describir todas aquellas palabras que nos sirvan a nosotros para describir a personas, animales, cosas, edificaciones, and all of the things are adjectives. So we are going to have some information about the adjectives. And in this case, adjectives can come before nouns or after linking verbs. So we use adjectives to describe nouns and pronouns and adjectives can come before nouns or after Linky bird. La posición de los adjetivos es antes del nombre que está describiendo o puede ser que lo encontremos después de los linking birds. That in that case, um, the linking birds explain the state of the subject, such as what it is or how it looks. So it is like linking something about the subject. But in this case, the adjectives um, are usually uh, found before the noun that is describing. So in that case, we have some examples. Because we are going to see some examples about uh, this word, because we are going to remember the adjectives. So let's see some examples. And in this case, we're going to begin with before the noun. Vamos a ver aquellos adjetivos que se usan antes del nombre. And we have here. Okay, we have the first one and it says, he dropped the hot plate. Hot plate. So, in this sentence, what is the adjective? ¿Cuál es el adjetivo en esta oración? Hot. Hot. Good. So, here we have the adjective and then we have the noun. We are describing the plate. 
He dropped the hot plate. Él tiró, él botó, él soltó el plato caliente. El plato estaba caliente, por eso él lo tiró, porque se quemó, ¿verdad? Se sorprendió por el, el calor del plato. Then, we have another one. I have a black cat. I have a black cat. What is the adjective here? Black. 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 Good. Black. We have here black. In this case, black is a color. Colors can be adjectives too because they are describing something, like in this example. Estamos describiendo a quién? Al gato. ¿Y qué le estamos diciendo del gato? Que es negro. negro. Que su color es negro. So, in that case, colors can describe. So, in that case, they are adjectives. Another one. But in this case, I don't need this one. Okay. Number three. The small boy ran down the street. The small boy run down the street. The small boy ran down the street. What is the adjective? Small. Small. Good. Good. Small. And we are talking about the boy that was running. So in that case, we are describing the uh, haste of someone. El chico pequeño o el niño, ¿verdad? We can say the niño because we are talking about um, the height. Estamos hablando de la estatura, estamos describiendo. Maybe I can say the boy, just the boy. But if I say the boy, and in that place, there are a lot of boys. What is the boy that I'm talking about? I need to give more information about the people that I am talking about. So in that case, I am talking about the small boy. But we can uh, use more details to talk about the boy. And the last one is, what a beautiful view. What a beautiful view. In this case, we are not making a question. We are saying like, we say in Spanish, que bonito se ve. So in that case, we are saying, what a beautiful view. What is it, the um, adjective? Beautiful. 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 Good. Beautiful. And we are talking about the view. Que vista más bonita, verdad? We can say it in Spanish. Qué vista tan bonita, qué vista bonita, o qué bonita esa vista. That is the expression in Spanish. So in this case, we're not making a question. We are just um, saying something about a debut. So then we know that what are the adjectives here. So that's good. Then we have after a linking verb. Vamos a ver algunos que van después de los linking verbs. So, esto solo es unir, ¿verdad? Linking verbs, the, like uh, the name said. Es solo unir, ¿verdad? Lo que está haciendo el nombre. So, in that case, it's very, very, like, simple to understand that in some cases we are going to use the verb to be to uh, create this kind of sentences. So, we're going to see the examples. And we have the first one. He seems tired. He seems tired. El luce cansado. In this case, seems is the linking verb because it's saying something about the person. El luce cansado. Like you are feeling right now. So it's uh, understandable. <laughs> In that case, uh, tired. Here, this one is the adjective. In este caso, ya no lo vamos a ver antes del nombre. In este caso, lo vamos a ver después del verbo que une. He 
en diagetive tired. Él cansado, se ve cansado, está cansado, luce cansado. That is the linking verb. Then, we have another one. The view is beautiful. This is different from the other sentence that we have in the previous example. The view is beautiful. In this case, is is the linking verb, but our adjective is this one, beautiful. Aquí estamos uniendo the view and beautiful con el verbo to be is. Then we have, don't worry for the examples. You know that you are going to have this information in the link that I, I'm going to send to you later. I guess tonight or maybe tomorrow morning. But don't worry, I have all the information here and you're not going to miss anything. So, then we have the weather become cold. The weather become cold. So here we have the adjective and we have here Yes, I know. And we have the weather become cold or has become, that is the expression, the other expression. El clima se volvió frío. And the last one, my cat is black. My cat is black. So estoy uniendo las oraciones y aquí tengo el adjetivo. So now, the linking verbs are verbs like become and seem. Si ustedes se encuentran en medio de una oración, seem, be, in its form is am and are, and seem, some linking verbs que están uniendo, which are not actions, but uh, instead, um, Link the subject to an adjective. Entonces, esos eh, linking verbs están uniendo el sujeto con el adjetivo. And that is the work that they are doing. And also, they are eh, linking nouns or phrase that give us more information about the subject. Because in this case, we're talking about someone. So, that is the part of the adjective. Now you know and you remember what are the adjectives. So because that is the review of the topic of the adjective. So now you know that we can use colors, we can use even numbers, we can use some words to describe. Los adjetivos son para describir, los utilizamos para describir. Y todo aquello que me ayude a mí a tener más información sobre alguien o sobre algo es un adjetivo. So in that case, we know that are the adjectives. Now we are with the second part of the review. Adverbs. We are going to know what are the adverbs. So the same question. What is an adverb? What do you think is an adverb? Or do you have an idea what an adverb is? Okay, I know that you know, but we are going to remember. Yes. I don't remember. You are going to remember, I know, because I'm going to tell you what is an adverb. And also we are going to see the example and you're going to say, that's true, I know that information before. But let's see. We have here that adverbs are used to describe verbs adjectives or other adverbs. Now, we know that adjectives are for describing nouns and pronouns. Adverbs are for describing verbs, adjectives, and other adverbs. They are often, but not always, may but adding L, Y, T, 
here the as it is. So I'm going to write the information. Perdón, teacher. Eh, el adverbio es el que modifica al verbo, ¿verdad? ¿eh? Yes. Of course. ¿Ven qué le digo? Si ¿Sí se acuerdan, pero no lo recordaba en este momento. You have the information, but don't worry. We are going to remember everything. Or other adverbs. Now you know that in this case, they are describing or modifying in some cases, the verbs, adjectives, and also other adverbs. La, los adverbios son palabras que nosotros lo utilizamos para describir a los verbos, a los adjetivos, e incluso los mismos eh, adverbios. Ellos, mmm, la mayoría del tiempo o la mayoría de los adverbs eh, se hace agregando L, Y a los adjetivos, o sea, la misma forma del adjetivo, lo tomamos, le agregamos L, Y y se convierte en un adverb, pero no siempre, ¿verdad? Siempre hay casos medio diferentes. So, let's see this example. Let's see, let's see. We have, I walk Slowly. It's slowly. This one, slowly, is the adverb. In adjective, if we have the adjective, cuando tenemos el adjetivo, it's slow, lento. Slowly se refiere a caminar. Camina de manera lenta, ¿verdad? O camina muy lento. I walk slowly. Camino. Lentamente, we can say. Y si estamos hablando de eh, adjective, the machine is slow. La máquina es lenta. But in this case, I am talking about the action. Then I have another example, and it says, they work quickly. They work quickly. Quick es rápido. Quickly en este caso es trabajar de una manera muy rápida o rápidamente. And we are describing the action that is the verb. And we are going to have examples using the The adverbs. I'm going to use um, the most common adverbs. Vamos a utilizar los adverbios que son como un poco más famosos, más conocidos. Y vamos a ver algunos ejemplos con estos adverbios. I have really, that really is an adverb. Fairly, that is the word that we have for the conversation that we were listening on the platform. Very, that is another ad, uh, adverb that is very famous. Or it's more common. Then we have pretty, but in this case, we're not talking about something physical. In this case, it's talking about like pretty big, un poco grande, like that. Then we have two, and that's it. That are the examples that we are going to have. So we're going to see the adverbs and we are going to see the examples. And in this case, it's adverbs before adjectives. That is the topic that we are developing. So the first one is really. That is the first adverb. And we have different examples. Let's see the example number one. 
when it's really nice. Juan is really nice. Uh, in this case, we are like emphasizing something around Juan. Juan es, como queriendo decir, es el mejor, es increíble, like that. So in that case, we are just not saying Juan is nice, because in that case, Juan es cool, Juan es bueno, Juan es, está bien. When we are just saying Juan is nice. But when we are saying, Juan is really nice. I'm saying that he is the one. I'm I'm talking about a, that a good and, and person. So in that case, I am emphasizing something about Juan. Then number two, it's a really nice city. It's a really nice city. Es una ciudad muy buena. It's a really nice really nice emphasize then that price is really good that price is really good it's a price is muy bueno so in that case we are finding that the price is the best option that i have because good is just plain but a really good is something really really good bastante bastante bueno y que necesitamos aprovechar así que en este caso los adverbs before adjectives me dan un énfasis de lo que yo estoy diciendo que es algo más allá de lo que yo podría decir simplemente utilizando el adjetivo and the last one for really is that a cell phone is really small Give me one second. I'm just going to end this uh, sentence and I will give you the time. Give me a moment. That cell phone is really small. Tell me. Emerson. Teacher, it can be my cell phone is slowly. It's slowly, yes. It's slowly is an adjective. You can uh, say it like that. I mean, it's an adverb. Yes. Oh, oh, perdón, oh, my cell phone is really slow. In that case, John, yes, you can use adverbs for adverbs, but you can say my cell phone is really slow, and both are okay. Okay, mm -hmm. because in that case, you can use the adverbs to um describe verbs adverbs and adjectives so in that case you can do it so that's a, a good um option then we have fairly in that case we're not talking about fairies or, or something like that we are talking about an adverb and we have the example let's see we have The first one, it's fairly big. Then we have the second one. And it says, it's a fairly big city. That is the name of the conversation that we had. Then we have, the house is very spacious. It's, um, we can translate fairly like, más o menos, bastante, like that. It's like, in this case, the house is fairly spacious. It's como, la casa es más o menos espaciosa, pero no lo suficiente. It's like that when we are using fairly. Más o menos, pero no completamente. 
Perdón, ¿qué tipo de adverbios estamos ocupando? In this case, we are just using uh, the ones that we can use for the adjective. In the case, it's not like we are making um, the division about the adverbs of time, for example, because in that case, we are not using them. In this case, we are just using the most common uh, that we can use to describe or talk about the adjective. So in that case, we're not uh, using um, the different kind of adjective, uh, the adverbs. So in this case, it's just the most common that we can use in a conversation. But we are not talking about um, um, no estamos hablando de tiempo, no estamos hablando tampoco de lugar, porque tenemos lo de lugar también. So in, in this case, uh -huh. so in this case, it's not like uh, that kind of adverb. In this case, it's just for expression. So in that case, it's like we can say mm, about the mood or something like that because we are using it for the slide. Or even we can say it is for affirmation because they are aff affirming something, saying something that is uh, true. Then we have the house is fairly spacious. Then we have the other one that, that is, in this case, we are going to use a two um, kind of familiar words because we are going to say something about this one and we are going to use she is fairly fair. It's like this. It's like saying, es bastante justa, or es más o menos justa, in that case. Then we have very, there is another one, very. And we have the example. It says, it's not very expensive. No es tan caro. It's not very expensive. Then we have, he is very handsome. Él es muy guapo. Handsome. In that case, we are like saying, as we're saying in the first uh, one, tenemos los adjetivos y yo los puedo utilizar y decir, he is handsome, él es guapo, pero se quedaría hasta ahí. No le estoy dando como eh, el énfasis o la importancia a lo que yo estoy viendo, pero si yo quiero decirle a alguien, wow, he is very handsome, Es como muy guapo y ponerle el énfasis a, a, a la frase. Entonces, por eso es que utilizamos las, eh, los adverbs con los, adver los adjectives, porque estoy dándole ese énfasis de decir es muy, es más o menos, o está muy bien. So, in that case, es emphasize, más que todo para el énfasis. I am very nice. Very nice. And the last one is the clock is very old. The clock is very old. And we are going to have two more because we have just five minutes. We have three, but in this case, I was saying that it is not talking about a girl. In this case, it's an adverb. And you are pretty cool. Es decir, like, you are okay, but eh, that's okay. It is not like very, very important to know that you are cool. It's like, it starts bastante bien, but it's okay.
you are pretty cool. And the second one, it's pretty cool, but it is not cool like freezing. It's pretty cool and that's okay. It's pretty cool. Es, está bastante frío, pero no es como que esté muy, muy frío, que no soporte eh, lo frío, sino que está bastante y es aceptable. And the last one, too. It's too cold. In this case, it's a different. It's too cold. Está demasiado frío. It's too cold. And she is too nervous. Está demasiado, está muy nerviosa. Nervous. So, that is not like we're going to have a lot of information about these kind of topics because they are like kind of short. And, um, we're going to use these ones because maybe in some cases we, when we talk on when we are writing something on when we are uh, uh, reading something, we can say this kind of structures and uh, we don't pay enough attention to them because we understand what we are listening or we understand what we are reading, but we are not uh, paying attention to that, uh, those structures. So in that case, we just need to focus on the uses of the words because you know that it's very, very important that we can expand or have a more vocabulary, more structures that we can use to talk with people. So in this case, we are going to use this adverb before adjective to make an emphasis or, or give the enough attention to the words that we are saying. So in that case, that is the main use of these topics because maybe we have vocabulary and that is very, very important that we have the vocabulary because we're going to talk about some specific topics, but also we need to know how to use the, uh, that vocabulary and um, what kind of structures we are going to use. So. We are almost done with the session number one, and you are going to rest finally. So we have just one minute to end the session, so don't worry. And um, I will send to you the link. I, I guess I will send this link right now uh, at the end of the session, so you can see the information tomorrow. I'm not saying that you are going to see the information right now because I know that some of you are very, very tired. So don't worry about the information. The information is in the document, so it is not going to go anywhere. Así que les voy a mandar el enlace de este documento al grupo para que ustedes lo vayan revisando en el día cuando tengan tiempo o cuando ustedes no pueden accesar a las sesiones. Ustedes ya tienen ahí todas sus las oraciones y toda la información que ustedes necesitan. So, it's time to say goodbye. It's time to go to sleep finally. So, we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow. Have a really good night. Thanks. Thank you, Thanks. teacher. You're welcome. See you Bye, tomorrow. guys. Good night, guys. Good night. Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.